We seek the grace of healing, O God. In our families, our friends, and the world. Be with us, O God. Let us pray. O God of unchangeable power, when you fashioned the world, the morning stars sang together, and the host of heaven shouted for joy. Open our eyes to the wonders of creation and teach us to use all things for good, to the honor of your glorious name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. reading from the book of Jeremiah. Excuse me, a, a reading from Luke. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called over to her and said, Woman, 
You are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the Lord of the synagogue, the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured what had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, you hypocrites, do not each of you on the Sabbath untie his oxen or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And, how, and ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day. When he said this, all of his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing all the wonderful things that he was doing. Well, Hank was led by the Spirit because I want to say a few words about the other reading appointed for today from Jeremiah. So let me read this. The word of the Lord came to me. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, ah, Lord God, truly, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am only a boy, for you shall go to whom, to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. I've seen recently the replay of um, an episode of what's called That's Life. It's an older BBC um, television program that is synonymous with something like This Is Your Life, right? And this is an episode from the late 80s, and it featured a man, um, Nicholas Winton, and in this program, Nicholas Winton is sitting in the front row in this um, crowded theater. And he's there because he knows he's going to get a humanitarian award. And he's going to get this award because earlier in his life, much earlier in his life, when he was 29 years old, he was starting out as a stock broker in 1938. And he had heard that there were tons of refugees in Prague who were fleeing what was going on in um, Europe at the time. And something came over him and he canceled his vacation and he went to Prague. He wanted to go see what was going on. He ended up spending three weeks there. And in the course of those three weeks, he organized eight separate evacuations of children, mostly Jewish children, 
to England. And he did it as long as he could before the progress of the war bent. He just had to leave. And when he got them to England, he found them all foster homes. And of course, many of these foster homes became permanent because they lost their parents. And so the MC says, is there anyone in this theater who owes their life to Nicholas Winton? And little did he know that they had invited a whole group of these children now grown up to be in the theater. And one by one they stood and started clapping. And you can see him confused about what's going on and then all of a sudden he realizes the magnitude. There are today even over 6,000 people around the world who owe their life to Sir Nicholas Winton. All on this, all as a result of one canceled vacation and doing something he didn't expect to do or maybe as a stockbroker didn't have the skill to do. I, before you were born, God says to Jeremiah, before you were even ever in the womb, I consecrated you. I knew you. I am appointing you for service, for mission. I think we live in a world today that I just came back from dropping off my oldest child at college for his first year. And um, before we left, there was this great pomp and circumstance convocation and a number of speakers got up to speak. And I think most of them pretty much said what I think we experience mostly in life, that we're, we're kind of encouraged to think of life as kind of self-constructed, right? I'm going to make these decisions. I'm going to choose my path. I'm going to do X, Y, and Z to achieve this and that, I can make these choices, the implication being I can make them in the order that they need to be made, I can, I can make them all turn out, self-constructed life. You're here, one of the speakers said, to discern what you want to do. You are going to discover it. You get to choose. One even said, don't listen to superstition. I don't know what the subtext of that was. I can imagine, might even be, don't listen to, you know, anything about like, you know, somebody telling you that God is a part of your life. I mean, I don't know, but maybe, right? We live in this self-constructed kind of world. And yet here we have Jeremiah. Before you were in the room, I knew you. I consecrated you. You are mine. I have a job for you. This is what it is. Go. Do it. Oh, but I can't do that. I'm only a boy. I don't have the skills. I'm not smart enough. I don't know how to do it. Doesn't matter. I'm going to give you what you need to do it. When we're baptized in the Christian faith, when one is baptized, that's what they say they're doing. I'm, I'm choosing your path for me. Now, this isn't 
this isn't that we can't have passions and it's not that it's it's you know this life didn't turn out exactly the way you thought it was going to turn out did it moment after moment decision after decision all turned out exactly how, no God is for us. At the end of our uh, main services here in this tradition, we pray a post-communion prayer that says, now send us forth to do the work you have given us to do, O God. And in the oldest version, it says, help us walk in the pathways that you have created for us to walk in. Give us the grace to do as you want us to do. Give us the grace to be the people that you call us to be. God calls each and every one of us to a vocation a purpose. Today's gospel that Hank did read, we have uh, Jesus against all the religious leaders sticking to what God called him to do. You hypocrites. This woman needs God. Doesn't she deserve it? Now, Jeremiah's call is, is an encouragement, you might say, to each and every one of us that God has a pathway for us to walk in. And if you don't really see it or if you're worried about doing it or you don't know exactly what it is or if you think you're not skilled enough or if you think your health is not good enough or God doesn't care because there is a moment at least though probably thousands, but at least one moment in some way and in some place and in some situation that only you can be the one to bring God's peace and God's grace and God's healing only you can do it. Amen.
you're able, I invite you to stand as we continue on page four. In peace, we turn our awareness to the presence of God's spirit that is always with us and always within us. Let us bring before God all who seek to follow Jesus, that they might hear and follow the direction of the Spirit. Let us bring before God all entrusted with authority in the nations of the world, that they have governed by love and humility above all else. We pray for the leaders of our own nation, for Joe, our president, for Roy, our governor, for the leaders of our city and county, and for all elected officials. Let us bring before God the poor, the forgotten, and those who are marginalized as we renew our commitment to the, love, the lonely and the unloved. We lift up before you, almighty God, the needs of those in our own community, for those who go without food, without shelter, for the ministry of the Church of the Advocate. Let us ask God to comfort and surround with peace all of who are in this room with us now people we know and love, as well as people who are strangers to us. That we may be the blessings to one another, remember especially those who are sick and grief or despondent. Let us bring before God all our reasons to be thankful as we remember our abundance and the life-living way of gratitude. Let us remember those who have died and pray that perpetual light will shine upon them. May God still our minds, calm our hearts, breathe fresh life into us, and make us instruments of peace, justice, and mercy. Amen. Amen. During the music that follows, you're invited to come forward to light candles at our votive stands as a way of connecting your prayers with the heart of God. And as you come, if you wish to place a written prayer request, in the basket in the aisle, please feel free to do so.
thanks, my helpless soul, on thee. Leave me not alone, still support and comfort me. All my trust on thee. Love your enemies and do good, expecting nothing in return. Be merciful as God is merciful. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Between strangers and friends, male and female, old and young, Christ has broken down our barriers and bound us to himself and to each other, that we might share his peace. My sisters and brothers, the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. And we greet each other with a simple bow, the peace of Christ be with you this evening.
We continue on page six in your order of service. God be with you. God, God, spirit is here. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right, our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, holy God, almighty and eternal sovereign, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks because by the Holy Spirit you lead us into all truth and give us power to proclaim your gospel to the nations, serving you as a holy people. Therefore, we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all those in whom the Spirit dwells to proclaim the glory of your name, forever praising you and saying, Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus, Deus Sabaoth, Deus Sabaoth, Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus, Deus Sabaoth, Praise and glory is yours, O God, for in your mercy you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our salvation. He offered his life once and for all people, a sacrifice for the sin of the world. On the night before he died, he gave us an eternal memory of his sacrifice in the offering of bread and wine and invited us to remember his death and passion by partaking of his body and blood. On that night, after he had given thanks, he broke bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. So now, merciful God, we ask you to bless and sanctify with your word and Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine that we receiving them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. We pray that all who partake of this holy sacrament may be filled with your grace and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. By Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as Jesus taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Amen. Behold what you are. May we become what we receive. This is the table, not of the church, but of Jesus. It is made ready for those who want to love him more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been here long, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed. Come, because it is the Lord who invites you. It is his will that we should meet him here. After you receive the consecrated bread, behind me will be a chalice bearer and an intinction cup. If you wish to drink from the chalice, it's the larger cup. If you wish to intinct your bread in, then it's the smaller cup. the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Oh, 
to every race and nation, the way of life eternal. Open our lips by your Spirit, that every tongue may tell of your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Forever go out with joy and be led forth with peace. Thanks be to God. 